Right, time to get on the Tigers for another day of road tripping heading south. We are chasing warmer weather and it is set to be 32 degrees today. So um, yeah, it's gonna get warmer, that is for sure. Mav is all here too, looking like an action man. And you are quite coordinated. My trousers, don't know if the camera can see them, go with your top in a, it would look a little bit twee kind of way. So we've done 11 hours and 11 minutes so far on the bikes and the nice feeling is that I'm quite happy to get back on this bike. We've just left the town and so the speed limit has gone much faster and I'm going to give it a little bit of a show of what happens when you go happy on this. I'm just going to double check what's over the brow of the hill of course because I'm not a complete lunatic but it looks like it's a big long straight road with no restrictions. There we go. Okay so I'm going to give it some boons. Are we ready? don't want to speed so I will keep it at that but that picked up now that was not with a gear drop so I just did that straight out of gear and that was uh, pretty sprightly to be fair I left Mav behind but it's Mav not filming he was oh but oh oh that's clever I see what you mean I just disappeared oh you you're you've done this before we've just got a fuel light on I accelerated so hard we used up all the fuel probably do it with a gear chain because I just did that third gear pull. We've got a big straight road with nothing on and we're stationary so I'm going to do a really fast pull away utilizing the quick shifter uh, which is awesome for saving clutch fatigue particularly with slow riding but also really good for acceleration not having to worry about the clutch so I'm going to pull away. Woohoo! <laughs> we got a wheelie! Oh! Quick shifter! Okay, I don't want to speed, so you get the idea. And oh, we're going into a 90 now. Quick shift is pretty smooth. I did a wheelie then though. That was quite exciting. I guess that's a variation between bikes because some bikes like the Africa Twin have anti-wheelie, which would slow that down. Good power though. 900, I think it has all you need. We are back filling up. So the fuel tank is 20 litres. We've done 191 miles since we last filled up the 20 litre tank. Triumph estimate a 54-ish MPG. So we're gonna do a quick calculation once I've filled up to work out what our actual is based on a lot of motorway and a good chunk of sort of sweeping roads, a few bits of town. So I'd say it's a pretty varied road test. So I'll finish fueling and then we'll get the calculator out because my quick maths ain't that quick. So I've just surprised myself, a manufacturer who is on the less over marketing side of it, we've just got the calculator out and we got 58.6 miles per gallon on a pretty mixed terrain. So thank you Triumph for actually being honest about the MPG of this bike. Quite impressed with that. That's gonna give you a pretty decent mileage if you do, I can't do that maths on the spot. If you take 20 litre tank, well, we've done 191 to the tank. I'm showing my blondness now. Okay, for anyone who uses action cameras like the uh, GoPro, you'll see one of the reasons why I decided to change and get a DJI action cam. So DJI is really known for drones. Normally, when you want to take your camera off the mount, you've got to faff around unscrewing and stuff. But with this, you can literally two fingers. There's a little clip that you squeeze and then you lift the camera up. There you go, it comes straight off. There's a little bit of magnet in there so you can hear it if I put it close up. Kind of grips. That then engages, clips on. As easy as that, take it on and off. Such a good system and it's solid. Like it's solid, it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, confidence as a motorcycle rider is really important and I think there's a couple of things that build confidence for me as a rider. Now the first one is your riding position and how easy it is to reach the ground and the second one is weight. So this bike is 860 to 880 millimeter in seat height. Now I am 169 centimeters tall and I have a 69 centimeter inside leg. I currently have the seat on the higher of those seating positions and you can see that my feet are easily touching the ground on both sides. I've got a slight bend in my knee and actually without having to shift my butt cheeks, if I go one foot, I can get a flat foot with a foot on the peg 
and that's without a bum cheek shift, which I think is quite important because often on a bike you have to kind of shift to get off. Now, the standover height is also pretty narrow, which adds to the, the seat height combination reaching the ground. If we take that compared to the rivals, it is on the lower end of the spectrum as far as seat height. For example, a T7 is 880, which is the higher end. This has the option to go lower. So if you're thinking about slightly shorter riders or people really wanting to have the aid of comfortably reaching the ground, it's a great feature. Now, the other thing we want to think about with a big bike like this never got off a bike before, it's always more difficult with luggage, is the weight of the bike. They, they can be quite intimidating. As this is a 900, it is quite a competitive weighing bike. This thing weighs in at 229 kilograms, wet. So that's with the fuel, the oil, all of that kind of stuff. However, as you can see, I've put the kitchen sink on it. So I reckon I've probably got another 30 kilos on here, which means we're pulling in a more like 260. But that's my choice. If I was to go off road, I'd certainly be taking these off for technical stuff. You know, a little bit of trail riding, absolutely fine. But if I'm wanting to hit hard stuff, that extra 30 kilos isn't needed. I've also got some extra items on here that are going to add to that weight, like the additional protection. Obviously, that's a good thing because it's protecting the bike, but you've just got to factor that into what your overall weight is. Now, I've talked about picking up a bike loads of times before. You'll have seen me pick up loads of different bikes if you've been watching some of my other videos. And I'm a big fan of practicing. There are way more than one way to skin a cat. I've worked out what works for my body and a back squat isn't one of them because I've got a reconstructed hip. So I'm going to quickly show you that you shouldn't be intimidated by the weight of your bike and actually practicing lifting and lowering a bike is a great idea so that when you are then in the wilderness in a ditch upside down freaking out you don't panic and pull your back and do some damage so i'm going to lower it down and because i've got the hard panniers on i've got a straight back all the weight's going into my legs and i'm lowering it down it's going to hit the pannier sorry pannier and then the pony is now down it's going to rock i'm trying to do this really gently because obviously this is a, a purposeful drop not a, a planned drop, so I can look after the bike. So there we have an upside down tiger. It's gonna get angry with me. So obviously you can pick up with a, with a bar lift, you can do a back squat, you can do a front squat, and you can ask your mate to pick it up. Mav's filming and doesn't look very strong today, so I'm gonna do it on my own. First thing, I'm gonna engage the rear wheel. So I'm just gonna tip it back again onto the rear wheel. To there, got a little bit of a scrapey sound. I'm then going to get my hands secure on the grab rail and the handlebar. My back is nice and straight, I've got my legs, and then I'm going to lift it up. And there we have the tiger back on its pads. Whew. Practice it, it's worth it. It's a big bike, but it's achievable. And obviously, if you're in a ditch or something, it's going to be slightly different. I'm on a flat bit of gravel but still principle applies. Woo! pushing back on we've got about an hour left to get to the hotel and we're going to hit the uh, motorway and get us there quick bikes are doing awesome there they are all the luggage all the luggage map good got a thumbs up
the hotel. We had a little bit of a, an errand detour, but we are all good. going through town we've just uh, done a little bit of a supermarket stop to get some munchies so that we're going into the national park today on the way on the last leg to Granada it means we can have a little picnic somewhere in the mountains which would be nice uh, I was I just saw this and really fancied it <laughs> so the glass is going in my tank bag so we don't get a small shop in a panel and uh, yeah that bike's handling really nicely in town. The quick shift is really good for slow moving stuff. They're really like clutch. Feels agile enough in traffic. Really feeling comfortable on this bike. All right, Mav is just doing some admin. There he is. Mav! stopping for some lunch right here oh my leg is actually wedged <laughs> okay a common theme in a lot of my big adventure bike videos is my mission to try and learn power spin turns which is where you stand off the bike and you use the engine to turn and go that way. Now, you'll have watched it in my other videos. The very first time was the Africa Twin off-road in Wiltshire. It ended up in me lying down, apparently in a bit of a, um, a sewage pile. Turned out I didn't realize that mud was actually a mark keep. Anyway, Mav is a bad influence, it's all him. So, I have another ADV bike, and the only way to learn and get better is to keep practicing. Now, this is a really heavy bike right now because I've got at least at least 30 kilos of luggage so Mav's gonna come in shot and be there to uh, catch me if it all goes wrong so we'll see what happens and when I say it all goes wrong this is a controlled environment the worst thing that's gonna happen is I lie it down and Mav will jump in and help me lower it down as opposed to dropping it okay obviously the first step is making sure that traction control is turned off so I'm gonna make sure it's in rally pro mode linking heck that's, that's a lot, lot of luggage. Okay, the bike starts in road mode. One press, back to off-road. So you can't accidentally start it with everything off. That's quite clever. So one press and it's gone. Okay, so got you need the gravel, but you don't want the gravel. It's in my hip. No, okay. Okay. Right, come on. I'm going to try this again. I've got to go. I've got to get it down quicker, haven't I? I've got to go drop and go. One more try, and then maybe we try it with out the luggage tomorrow, if not. Okay, I'm gonna try and drop it a bit more. Wow. I'm not convinced I'm facing a different way. Okay, I need a, I need a pause. She's heavy, right? She's really heavy. But, I'm making this the hardest I could possibly make it. Yeah. Oh, my elbow tendonitis doesn't like that. Um, I'm gonna really have this. Yeah, okay, so that felt much better, that last one. I'd like to give it one more try. Sure. You but I'd like around. to, you well, you can yeah, break. yeah, I'll take a break. I'll, I'll the back right? Thank you. Okay. Sure. Yeah.
Yes! Absolutely nailed it. Mav is the, the like spin turn pro in my books and you absolutely nailed that, but it still didn't look easy like you do on some. That's a lot of weight, eh? Good job. That was awesome. That is what I'm trying to be. This is what I'm gonna be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Although I hope I never grow up. <laughs> don't, don't, don't grow up. <laughs> yeah. About an hour and 25 minutes from our end destination in south of Spain. As far as the road leg of this adventure, there's gonna be loads more in the next videos for seeing this bike off-road and also, of course, the Thousand Juniors Rally. But I thought it was probably time to talk a little bit more about the Tiger. This is the Rally Pro and there's some more things I haven't told you about as we've gone down on this road trip. And having sat on this bike for, I think, over 15 hours now, I've got a good bit of experience on how, how it feels. So I'm also going to get into some of the things where I think, sorry Triumph, you could probably improve this bike and make it even better. But first of all, it's a triple. Now in the adventure bike world, a triple is pretty unusual. I'm pretty sure Tigers are the only big adventure bikes that have that. So it has a 132 firing on a T-plane crank. The long and short of that and the scientific mechanical side of it, I'm not so interested in. For me, it's about how it actually feels. The key benefit and the reason why Triumph have done it is because it enables their triple to give a lower available torque, which is gonna help you in slow pull away or slow technical riding off-road, maybe in town too. And the fact that the weight is quite low and forwards riding position etc all of that comes together to give you quite a lot of confidence at low speeds tomorrow is going to be the test when i get off road but as far as the road capability of this bike you can certainly feel the advantage now one of the things with the triple and the the t-plane crank downside wise it can mean that at the higher speeds you get a little bit more vibration now when you are sitting above 75 obviously officer i've never done that but if you are going a bit higher than that, you do start to get a little bit more of a vibration out of the bike. But honestly, I think it's more of a personality and it isn't a fatigue. Sometimes when I first rode it, I'd look down and think, am I in six or I need to go up a gear? Cause it kind of, you hear it. It's not really growling. You can just hear it kind of one, three, two-ing, I suppose, uh, at those top speeds. But again, I just don't think it is a downside for the quality of the bike and the advantage it's gonna give you at the bottom speeds, it's absolutely great. Okay, next up, talking about the wheels and the tires. Now, we have a 17 and a 21. They are spoked wheels, which is what you'd kind of expect to be going off into off-road. Now, the reason that I believe Triumph have gone for the 17 on the rear is because it's a lot easier to get road tires, and that is gonna be an advantage. The disadvantage is the fact that it's very difficult to get a moose for that tire. So for me, going into the rally, I really wanna be running mooses because getting a puncture out in the middle of the Morocco is something that I will cry about if it happens. Now the front tire, they've gone for the 21, big advantage off-road, bigger wheel means that it just rolls over rocks, you're gonna get a much easier ride and it's uh, also still gonna be possible to get road tires for it. So that's kind of the setup. Obviously for the rally, I'm gonna be putting knobblies on this bike. Moving on to the suspension, you can see there's a lot of bounce in there and that honestly scares me a little bit. But when you're on it and you're riding along on the road, there is absolutely no wallow. I don't know where that goes or what magic happens inside when that engine turns on, but it's beautiful. It like powers and leans into the corners. It sucks up the little bumps and rocks. Obviously the off-road is gonna be the full test on how that suspension is. It is a show of suspension front and back. And I believe you've got 240 and a 230 mil travel. The key test will be the off-road, so check out my other video for how this beast is in, in the dirt. Okay, we've got 320 discs up front. We've got, we've got the Brembo Salima braking system, and I've got to say, this thing stops when you want it to. At no point have I been like, oh, these brakes aren't working. They're sharp, they're responsive, and obviously, perfectly matched with the size, the weight of the bike, even with the luggage on, which is a good, good thinking. My noticing my hand is on the fog lights. So there are some accessories for this bike. This bike does have a couple of additional accessories that are not just standard on the Rally Pro. Probably should tell you what is extra on the Rally Pro versus the Rally. So we'll do that in a minute, but there are over 65 genuine Triumph plants that you can bolt on this and accessorize up and, you know, things like fog lights and light guards, all that kind of stuff. 
Rally Pro is a couple of grand more than the Rally, and what is it that you're getting for that? So running through the extra items on this bike, you are getting some fog light. The top engine bars are an extra on this bike, not the Rally Pro, but the engine frame on the lower part. You've got a sump guard to keep the bottom safe. You've got a center stand down here. I personally hate center stands, but they're pretty important for any time your bike is parked up to keep your tires fixed. Uh, riding modes, you've got two extra riding modes. So you've got the Rally Pro off-road mode, which basically, as standard in the mode, turns off your traction control and ABS. And I love the fact that this bike has it. So I've ridden quite a few of the other big bikes and say, take an example, the T7, when you are riding that bike, every time you turn the ignition on, you've got to turn those settings off. And you get to the point where you're riding along and you want to stop and you go, I'm just going to leave the ignition on so I don't have to go back into the settings and change it. So awesome work trying for putting an actual mode in for that. The other additional mode is a customizable one. So you can make your own setup, tweaking all of the, those different functionalities. We have heated seats as well on the Rally Pro. Lovely for a nice warm bum on a cold day. And your pillion seat is also heated with its own control system. So say you want a hot butt, but they don't, no problem at all. Quick shift is also on the Rally Pro. Lots of fatigue removal for your left hand on the clutch. You can just pump through the gears. Great for acceleration, pulling away, etc. too. The last two items it has is tire pressure monitoring, which you can actually see on the TF display. And then also My Connectivity, which is the Triumph app that talks to the bike and enables you to have your maps and stuff if you can get it to work. Unfortunately, neither myself or Mav have managed to get our phones to talk to the bike this week. So could be user error could just be a little bit tricky. Okay, the final and probably most critical part is what do I think this bike needs to improve on? And I'm gonna be completely straight and honest with you. I really like this bike, actually. It's, uh, it scared me how much I like this bike. It's blown my expectations as well. I didn't expect to like it as much as I do, particularly compared to all of the other competitors of it that I've ridden. It's all down to how your butt feels on the bike, so I can't tell you if this is the best bike. The panniers, obviously these don't come with the bike, but the fact that you have to have the key to close them just bugs me a little bit, because when you're sort of around your bike, you're not gonna be leaving it. You don't need to lock it every single time and I cannot tell you how many times in the last five days I've had to like go to get the key to go in and then I do something and then I'm like oh I need the key to close it just a little bit fiddly and annoying and then probably the most painful thing that I don't like about this bike is unfortunately the seat now you can always get different seats for these things and you could always just woman up a little bit or put some padding on but this seat has a two-hour golden window and after two hours, your butt starts to go, what are we doing? <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit flat. Obviously, it's got comfortable foot pegs for a riding position. You can stand up and give your bum a break, but realistically, you kind of want to stop for coffee or something. So a slightly softer seat, I think, would be my biggest thing, my biggest gripe on this bike. Uh, and that's changeable, so it's not a deal breaker for me at all. Right, I'm going to get back on the road. We've got another hour and a half to go to our hotel, and that will be the end of this road trip. So that kind of concludes a summary of my love affair touring down from the UK to the south of Spain on the Triumph Tiger Rally Pro. It's a massive thumbs up for me. It's all about you getting on the bike and seeing how you feel on it. down we have made it boop, to boop. Woo, Granada end of road trip I'm gonna fist pump you with my helmet yeah. Woohoo! good day good what's, week what's your take on the tiger then uh, far exceeded expectations yeah you know for you know because we've just done road miles we had to hit some speed to catch up on some stuff and uh, we need to run over we need to run over he's not a bus he doesn't um, know where he's going that he's lost so, um, yeah, like it's 900, so people think, oh, you're a bigger bike. And yeah, there were moments, 
Um, Sorry. Um, there were moments where you're like, you think about would have had more power, but it didn't feel like a problem. And it was super stable, especially for a 21 inch front wheel. Uh, good in the corners, good in the twisties. You weren't like, oh, I wish I had a smaller wheel. Um, one row tires. How many? One sketch moment? You had a sketch moment too? I had one sketch moments, yeah. That's probably just the road. Yeah. Little the slide on a roundabout. Mm. Love, love the, love the, um, the quick shift. That's yeah. fun. Um, especially even for low down. A lot of the bikes don't work that well on the low down quick shift. I found even the low down quick shift works great too. Uh, so that was good. Um, weather protection, single hand adjust screen. Yeah, that's a great feature. You can nice. do it riding along. Yep. Um, mm. Backlit. Um, buttons, controls. Does we hit running late to the end of the day? Yeah, it might be like getting dark on us again. Okay, hotel. Hotel. We made it. Woo! Woo. Stay tuned for the next videos as we head off. Woo!